So uh, thank you all for coming up. Um, welcome to the ones that are never that don't uh, know the require LX uh, meetup. So we are a bunch of people from Lisbon, uh, Portugal, that gathers around uh, usually monthly uh, to talk about technology and bring some um, some friends and uh, share some knowledge. Usually this would be um, all together and uh, we partner with companies, tech companies around uh, that can host us. But with this COVID situation, we had to rethink our, uh, our format and Dashlane was so kind to uh, provide a Zoom instance for us to, to do this. And so actually they provide, uh, I, I have Ben Freeze. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, Dashlane uh, provided us the platform uh, or of their Zoom uh, for to help us make this uh, possible. So we had a, quite a few uh, formats for webinars now, but uh, we talked a bit and uh, we thought maybe that the non-webinar format would be easier and uh, would be also more um, easy for participation if anyone wants to join the chat, say something or show their faces uh, around. And MemSQL is also a partner with us, uh, making sure we have logistics and organization people enough to make this, bring this together. And uh, so thank you for, uh, for your support and standing by with us even with this whole change. Uh, let me see if I can skip my... Slides, yes. We have a, a, a Slack. It's not very dynamic lately. And I think that this online uh, overworking is hitting us. But if you want to chat with us, you can do it through Meetup meet, uh, email, uh, sorry, website, or through our uh, Slack. If you have any suggestion on a talk or something that you would like to see discussed here or bring someone on board, please feel free this is an open community and is for everyone and uh, we uh, welcome everyone that is interesting to share some knowledge some con connections do some networking or whatever um, today we have ben morse uh, from google talking um, about accelerated uh, mobile and he's a developer advocate on google ben i see your uh, face freezed are you there as far as i can tell i'm here okay uh, okay great you're all still moving for me <laughs> okay uh cool so uh ben uh Leo, leonardo pitelli brought ben with us today he's already uh, he's also a member of our organization leonardo and he's uh, been very uh, active on sharing his connections uh, with us so we can have great talks so thank you leo and um, that's it from my side. Let me, if you guys have anything that you guys would like to share, comment, please feel free. So Ben, stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. I will also share my screen now. Let's see. Of the 47,000 windows I have open, I must mm -hmm. find the right one. There we go. That looks promising. Okay. Yeah, we you can see probably see my screen. It's weird because Zoom doesn't show you what you're actually sharing. You have to guess. All right, it looks pretty good. So yep. this is me. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm a developer advocate at Google. I live in New Jersey in the United States, which is near New York, about maybe 20 kilometers from New York. And uh, it's a bit weird being at home all the time. We used to travel around and meet people like you in various places. I know Google even had planned a big event in Lisbon a couple of years ago that was canceled for various complex reasons. Uh, we wanted to go actually come meet you in person. I was running this thing called the AMP Roadshow. Where we'd go around the world to various places and meet people that were using AMP. But that was abruptly canceled in March. My tickets to Pakistan went unused, so oh well. But the advantage is uh, I've done a bunch of these virtual workshops with people where we can just get on our computers and I just, you know, walk upstairs and maybe you just get to your computer and suddenly we can be together. It's actually really efficient. 
So that's the advantage. I hope you're still all in good health though. I know things are complicated, especially in this country, but I know in Western Europe, all of Europe is kind of complicated now too. I hope you're doing well. If you wanna say a bit about where you're from, you can put that in the chat if you'd like to, or you could just get on the microphone for a minute and say hello. This is a very interactive workshop. And usually we do it with much larger group than this. So for this to work, I need you to take part and do stuff. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. I do as little talking as possible and want everyone to do exercises. The good thing is they're usually, the first ones are pretty easy. So you can get into it without too much fear. <laughs> and then as you go, it can make it a little harder. So yeah, if you wanna put the chat like who you are, just say hello or just get on the mic briefly and say who you are and where you are. That would be a great way to start. You can jump in. Can you guys hear Yeah, me? Tony. Okay, Hi. yeah. Uh, yeah, my name is Tony. I'm, I've been living in Lisbon for a year, so that's how I became uh, connected with this great meetup group, Require LX, and uh, I'm currently home for the holidays uh, working from California. Very nice. And I see uh, Helder says, hi, Christina. Christina says, from Lisbon, Portugal. Looking at some people over here, but I can't see your names on Zoom. There's a Bernardo, I see. I'm Penelope. Um, I'm Penelope, I'm hi. I'm currently living in Faro, so in the south of Portugal. Um, and I am a software engineer, and I work mainly for German companies <laughs> so yeah i do a little bit of um, react and javascript and um, node as well and i was just interested to see what amp is all about because <laughs> i never tried it oh thanks for being here and being curious about something new hi i'm uh, jose Cal. I'm from Coimbra. I'm near to, to hear about AMP. I hear something about it, but uh, I am never trying anything about it. Thanks for being here. And I see Rafael saying he is from Brazil, but in Lisbon now. Same language, more or less, probably pretty easy. We actually have, I think, the most companies using, uh, how do I put this? There's a lot of companies using AMP in Brazil. And I was going to Brazil JS every year, and we have some great things happening among Brazilian companies. Also, some Brazilian volunteers are translating, translating the courses that these are based on into Brazilian Portuguese. So thanks for being here. I think actually I'm supposed, I'm supposed to go to Brazil JS right now during November. I can go uh, after. Hi, I'm Bernardo. I'm a technical architect in uh, Cell Focus, which is a, a Lisbon-based company, but we have projects more or less uh, all around Europe and Middle East. Uh, I actually uh, had a project, a, a brief introduction to AMP uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, and it was a bit challenging because uh, the customer uh, the client wanted to add AMP to a full-fledged already in production website. So it was a bit of a challenge, yeah. Because of the, the I'll call it limitations, uh, but I know their reasoning. Uh, but yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a challenge. I'm sorry you went through that. That could be a big challenge. Actually, yeah. this will get easier. Uh, one thing we're not going to discuss today, but um, AMP or AMP has been used kind of uh, by itself. And uh, people have to do, feel obliged to make valid AMP to follow the rules of AMP. But actually, with changes coming in Google search and an AMP, it'll be easier starting next year just to use AMP components on any page on the web. And if you do that, of course, limitations that exist, that exist now go away. So we should discuss this because this is an important change that's happening. Does anybody else want to say hello? 
Hi, I can go. Yeah, I'm Leonardo. Uh, I'm originally from, from Argentina. I moved here to, to Lisbon last year, 2019. Uh, enjoying the city as much as I can do in this kind of, kind of situations. And um, yeah, really happy to, to be here. I also brought my t shirt. I don't know if it's there. Oh my God, an app with the logo, an AMP t shirt. <laughs> so I'm, yeah, really, I used to work with, with AMP in a, in a few companies, actually in the, the same company that I'm now, uh, but back in, in Argentina in a different project, let's say. Uh, but it's been a, a while since I, I touched it last time. So I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of new things there happening. I have to ask where that shirt come from. Uh, I think it was one of the AMP road shows. The, the AMP I was going to guess it might have been Buenos Aires. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was going to guess it would be an AMP road show. Uh, I was there. Mm, yeah. So I guess yeah, good yeah, to see you there. again. <laughs> 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 I will say um, the food there was incredible in Buenos Aires. <laughs> I've never had such good skirt steak ever before in my life. Yeah, I still nice. miss it. I think about it almost every day. <laughs> nice. Yeah. But let's go into this uh, workshop. I might do a bit of a shorter version because usually we have a larger group, but if everyone gets really involved and wants to go the full way, we'll go the full way. But let's just talk about what AMP is for a little bit and then try it out. If you used AMP before, this might be really simple because we're going into the basics. Um, the last thing we do, if we get that far, would be a more complex interactive thing. But the first step is just to make it easy, see how it works, see how it is to use AMP, and go from there. If it's too easy for all of you, let me know. But I'm guessing for most of you, this is, or either from what you've said, this is brand new. So let me go back to my lovely slide deck over here. This actually is a distillation of the beginning course workshop. So we have three courses we made that teach how to use AMP. And the first one, you could do it actually in about an hour and a half if you uh, skip some stuff. So that's our goal today is to do that. So first of all, uh, what is AMP? Why does AMP exist? The idea about AMP is to make it easier for people all over the world to use the web on all devices. So when people go to your website, you want them to get there quickly, see a lot of beautiful content, things that are easy to use that make a lot of sense to find what they want quickly. But also you want things to load smoothly and fast for things that jump around a lot, for things to be interactive immediately. You don't want your site to be hard for people to find and slow to load because we've all been there. You go to your mobile phone, you're out somewhere where the connection isn't great. You try to load a website, it loads very slowly. It gets frustrating. You look like her you get frustrated, you give up. Why does this happen? A few different reasons. One I just mentioned, sometimes things load slowly. And if your user is using a nice 4G connection on like a nice new iPhone 12 or Galaxy S20, whatever it's called, then it isn't really a problem in the same way, although people still notice speed differences. But a lot of people out there in the world have phones that are much lower powered that often execute JavaScript five times slower 10 times slower, they've got less memory, slower processors, and also they throttle the processor speed because otherwise the phone would melt in your hand and a phone melting in your hand is a very bad user experience. So often phones are just slow and often people are on connections that vary. Back in the olden days, back before March, I used to commute to a job in office. Those were the days. And I did that by taking a train to New York and during those 40 minutes on the train, I shared our Wi-Fi with a thousand other people. And most websites didn't load very well at all. I could tell that many sites loaded slowly because it extra code, extra large images. I knew they didn't have to be as slow as they were. If you go to like Wikipedia, it's super fast. I was grateful these sites existed. So it's a not good experience. And again, a lot of people in the world in different places, you know, out of big cities in many countries have 3G or even 2G connections. So if you want to build sites everyone can use, it's good to make them fast for everybody by making them light and efficient. A problem number two, unresponsive pages. So if you get to a website and you see content loading up, and they try to do something, try to press a menu button or try to scroll and nothing happens, 
for 100 milliseconds, 400 milliseconds, a couple of seconds, it feels like it's broken. People think the site is broken. Even a small delay of like 100 milliseconds or 150 milliseconds, people have said in studies, the site feels worse, there was, the experience isn't good, they don't trust it. So it's good if the page doesn't just load fast, but also is responsive. And number three, that has a stable layout. So often you go to a page, especially for some reason, recipes these days. If I'm making a lot of food at home, I'm going to a lot of recipe sites and you see your content loading up. You can look at some text, maybe a picture, and then suddenly everything moves because a picture loads in somewhere else. Everything shifts around. Or worse yet, an ad loads in and you're trying to not look at the ad and what you're doing is moved around. Or even worse, like a video ad loads in. <laughs> you try to avoid watching the video and things are shifting around as they load. It's a very disturbing experience and pretty common still on the mobile web. By the way, this is not in this deck, but do you know about Core Web Vitals? I'm now way off topic. Core Web Vitals are an idea. I should, I should hold on a second. We should have put this in the deck because this is a new thing. Google has actually made these new metrics that measure each of these things, Core Web Vitals. These things called largest contentful paint, first input delay, cumulative layout shift, they actually correspond to each of these things. Largest contentful paint being a way to measure how fast largest thing on the screen appears. Uh, the screen being the things before you scroll down. First input delay, meaning the time between uh, the user pressing a button or taking an action and the page being able to respond, that delay. And cumulative layout shift is a more complex measure of how much things move around on the screen. Google announced that Google search will be taking these things into account in search ranking starting in May of next year. They actually did a pre-announcement of the announcements and then the announcement to give folks a lot of time because people were at home, things are disrupted in the world in various ways. But starting in May, these things are part of a, a metric called page experience. That'll be a signal in Google search. So there's an incentive here to actually make these things better. If you use Google search, when you're trying to rank highly. Anyway, um, that was off topic. Actually, it was really on topic. These three things are important. And if you have questions as I go along here and ramble through all these things, or if you have comments, please just say them because this group is very small. So these three things matter, and these things can be problems. AMP is supposed to make all these things happen for you more easily. The idea is that doing this yourself can be challenging. It takes expert knowledge of JavaScript and of how things work on the web. One of the goals of AMP is to make all these things happen for you almost automatically. So unless you really try hard, you can't make these things go that badly. And in many cases, they go very well. So what is AMP? Okay, AMP is basically, fundamentally, mostly the idea of AMP is, is web components. Web components, you may have seen these before, essentially adding new tags to HTML that do things HTML does not do now. So HTML was developed as a document description language about 30 years ago, and it came with things like, this is boldface, this is a paragraph, this is a thing on the screen. It didn't come with tags that said things like, this is an interactive menu, this is a Twitter embed, this is a comments widget. Those things didn't really exist. Even images didn't exist back then. So web component libraries, the idea is to add these functionality, pieces of functionality to the web through tags, you can then customize with attributes and then make them behave the way you want them to behave. AMP is essentially a web components library. How does it work? AMP has its own JavaScript. Each component adds its own JavaScript to your screen, a very small amount of JavaScript that's made like small as possible, 8K, 10K, to make the component work. There's also an AMP runtime, a general uh, JavaScript bundle that AMP comes with that makes everything work on the page. And finally, if you follow the rules of valid AMP, there are rules of valid AMP. If you follow these rules, then your site may get put into AMP caches. So web crawlers out there, like Google's web crawler, are always looking for valid AMP pages. When it finds one, it informs the AMP cache, your HTML then is copied and it gets served from Google search, for example, by Google's own servers. Also, your images are optimized. I actually was looking at this just today. Do you know what AVIF is? AVIF, 
this new really great image format that's like a third or a quarter of the size of existing formats. They're working now trying to get AVIF support into the AMP cache. So if you have a valid AMP page that has images, they will get already transcribed into WebP images. And soon that will include even better AVIF images. Let me give you an example of this because this is a bit abstract. Let's say I go to my Chrome Dev Tools here and I pretend that it's actually a phone, like an iPhone 6. So this thing over here, you probably have seen this before. You can simulate different kinds of devices. So I'm now simulating a phone. I go to google.com and there it is, google.com. Oh, look at this. The first thing is about antitrust pressure on Google. That's why I love doing live demos because they can surprise you. Wow, that's really interesting. Uh, this actually, I think, is about AMP, believe it or not. <laughs> so we can discuss this. We put out this announcement about AMP last week, and I guess it's gotten picked up by some other people. That's so funny. That's a top result for me. Let's see this, actually. What is the actual article about? Yeah, so this is what's happening with AMP, that Google had this. Well, okay, let me show you what it is first, and they'll say why, why it's changing, because this is worth talking about. Let's look for something non-controversial like the US election. Okay, that seems like it's easy. So not controversial at all. Sorry, news is always controversial these days. You see this thing over here? These uh, stories at the top of the page? It's called the Top Stories Carousel. It's part of Google search in most countries, including I'm sure Portugal. It's uh, launched in all Western European countries, all European countries as far as I know. And see this little decal in the corner? This is a AMP decal, an AMP badge that indicates that those are valid AMP pages. If I click one of these things over here, it's going to load very quickly. And the special Google viewer experience, I can actually scroll from article to article this way, and they all load very fast. This is partly because they're AMP, and AMP is very fast and it's very compact, but also because in many cases, Google search has preloaded these things in iframes, so they're already there in the background. If we go back to Google search again here, which I will do, you'll see more AMP articles down here, more AMP articles down here, more carousels. And some of the actual search results over here, well, more AMP things, is also AMP. The Guardian is a big AMP user. So these mean that in these cases, these will all be served from Google's own servers. And they already have been optimized on Google servers. So AMP articles, AMP pages can also appear on desktop search, but the decal isn't there and they aren't served from Google servers in the same way. Let's look at this a little more. What is this thing over here? Let's go to this first result. Actually, let's go to the Guardian. The Guardian's a good site. So there's the Guardian here and the Google AMP viewer. Let's now change the URL bar so that we have no Google URL viewer. This is just the page itself. There it is. Notice this amp.theguardian.com URL. That's not required. They just happen to do that for their own convenience. If we look here in DevTools, we'll see a few things that are different. This is just a web page, but notice, for example, can you see this? Should I expand this a little bit? Notice the HTML, HTML tag has a little lightning bolt emoji next to it that indicates this is an AMP page or a valid AMP page. And then AMP version, the attribute over there, over here, notice these AMP iframe, AMP geo, AMP consent. Remember I was saying that there's these components that AMP adds to HTML. These are all things that Google, sorry, the AMP has added. This is a geolocation component. This is for cookie consent, GDPR, AMP sidebars for menus, and so on and so forth. Looking in here in the head, we see these extra bits of CSS, which they've added there. And also we'll see things here, like these little bits of JavaScript. This is for mustache templating for the sidebar. And up here, is the speeder zero.js amps runtime. My brief tour of amp. So what I was saying before, let's see if we actually get the same exact story as last time. Is it still there? There it is. So the problem with amp is that people felt obliged to use it and didn't always want to use it, but they felt obliged to use it to be part of the top stories carousel. We honestly didn't care how you made your page fast, as long as you made your page fast. So what will change in May is that this Top Stories carousel will be open to any page on the web. But pages with a better page experience score and a Core Web Vitals score will get preferential treatment. So if you don't use AMP, 
your chances of being in this top stories carousel are still, eh, if you use AMP, your chances are higher because AMP we know make your page faster. But if you want to not use AMP, make page faster your own way, that's fine. And honestly, antitrust is important and Google should not be acting in a way that's like a monopoly. That was a lot of stuff. <laughs> Any questions or comments so far on what AMP actually is? I can probably add something to the yeah, thanks. Con consent component that you were talking. Actually, we changed our our consent banner in, in the platform where, I, where I'm working. And it's, of course, using a third party tool that it's being loaded by JavaScript. And yeah, the first thing that we noticed was that the Darshish content full paint, for example, went mm. to the to the sky because it was <laughs> the largest content full paint is actually that component and it's i think it's the it's a common behavior in all the webs right now the the cookies banner is the one that appears on top of everything so that's the one that is uh, setting the, the 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 metric basically so doing that in a better way uh, will help a lot Interesting. Yeah. Do you know how large that JavaScript library was or how long it took to load? I've seen a couple of major providers that are used in Europe. Um, I, I didn't check. Actually, it's in production since this week. Uh, but <laughs> we could look at it. I think it's not about the, the, the JavaScript itself. Of course, it's adding more code, so it's impacting somehow. Uh, but I guess the, the biggest issue there is that it's it's uh, a component that is being we only check the, the the library there this DK let's say and then they build the entire template for us and for that I, they are of course going to a server then fetching the HTML injecting that in the page and then make it uh, making it appear with a with a transition so until the the component is ready to be to be used and, and, and they are in the page it takes really long so yeah we we need to to find a better way to 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 do that actually it's something that we could serve from from server side without any issue because it's based on a cookie and and we don't need to do it like client side but yeah my fear was it would be so big it actually would be the largest thing on the page and then it would actually change I've just kind of paint completely but let me know if you have problems with that because I don't I need to follow better what's happening in Europe as there's more sophisticated cookie you know reduction mechanisms and more sophisticated things that have a pop-up saying you can you know select advertising cookies or tracking cookies or just essential cookies there's a lot more fancy cookie uh, processes in Europe GDPR than we have over here yeah yeah it's uh, the, the law is changing always and um, yeah uh, yeah now they, they they you need to provide a way to to accept only a few categories or none of them of, of the cookies so first you need to categorize all your cookies that is something that you sometimes don't know because you are using third-party providers yeah, that they are sure. injecting cookies that you don't know all kinds of stuff yeah yeah and, and then the user should be able to to accept only one category or all of them and yeah, then change it in the future. So there is a, a lot of new providers <laughs> just working on that, <laughs> a new business. Uh, but yeah, actually, I, 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 but that's a different discussion. I, I don't think it's if, if any of us is like checking what, what we are accepting when we when one of those banners appear because I feel that they broke the web, basically. Uh, each each <laughs> website that you enter, then you have a huge pop-up there saying accept the cookies or reject them. And then you need to first click a button and then you will access. And sometimes the, the only thing that you want is access the content, not checking. But yeah, I understand that it's also related with, with uh, yeah. GDPR and... and, and the the rights that the we have as users to to not be in track and these kind of things but yeah they're useful but i find these things to be tough they make my 
my web experience slower having to always accept these things yeah. but yeah i mean being able to choose not being tracked and not getting ads based on what you're looking at that's nice so there's advantages yeah i've been talking to actually a developer in denmark about trying to get more support and amp consent for this enlarged cookie process because it's more and more common yeah so i may have questions for you about this later too mm -hmm. uh, i see a question here on the chat what percentage of sites already are using amp I don't know. It depends how you measure it. I've seen numbers before at various points in the last couple of years. I know it's, it tends to be the case that like of, of uh, clicks in Google search, more than 10% are on app sites. Sometimes it's bigger than that. It could be 20, 15. I'm not sure what it actually is. As far as URLs on the web, it probably is similar to that. But uh, yeah, we used to count the number of domains there were 60 million domains at one point. There were 5 billion amp pages out there. And we just stopped, we stopped counting because we count what a page is. It's kind of ambiguous and some domains are tiny. So it's hard to count accurately. Let's go back over here. We should be doing some, some coding. This is the most I've ever talked before we did any coding. Uh, so that was amp. <laughs> That's what it is. There's the cache, there's the JavaScript, there's the web components. We mentioned this also before. We said this, oh, look at this. We did these things already. The AMP cache tries to make things safer and faster. It adds source set. It will convert images to more modern formats and compress them for you. It will try to avoid cross-site scripting attacks. Here's how it looks again in the wild. So let's say you wanted to embed a YouTube video on your web page. Usually you would embed YouTube's JavaScript. They would load their CSS and so on. AMP does this all for you. Use the AMP YouTube component. All you do is specify the layout if you want to, the size of it, and data video ID, which corresponds to the ID of the video, which you can see in the URL bar. We'll do this ourselves in a couple of minutes, and that's it. Notice width and height are in there. Usually, you want to specify these things, width and height in AMP, because remember, one of the goals of AMP is to provide space for everything on the screen before it loads, so things don't shift around. So if you give your browser the size of it and give AMP the size of it, then AMP can help the browser lay your screen out, lay your page out so that things pop into their slots and things don't shift around, even for responsive images. So let's go by a few of these things. We're just going to use HTML today. Um, our starter project has CSS already built in. We're going to use at the end, if we get that far, a little bit of JavaScript. But the idea of AMP is that for valid AMP, you're supposed to not add your own JavaScript. It wants you to use AMP's components, not your own JavaScript. There are now certain ways to use JavaScript in AMP we can discuss. But when first AMP first came out, it was like, use our JavaScript, don't use your own JavaScript. There also was a limit back then of 50K of CSS per page. Now it is 75K of CSS because 50K was pretty hard to do. All right, so let's do some actual stuff together. I like to use Glitch for this because Glitch is an online coding environment. And you can all copy some starter code and make changes as you wish. And then also you can share it with people. So as you do the projects, you can then share the URLs with the group. And we can all look at your creation. Or if you have trouble, we can help you debug. It's very convenient. So glitch. So I want you to go with me to this URL, glitch.com slash tilde show you way. I'm putting this here in the chat. This is the starter code for this workshop. So please go over there on your computers or devices. And oh, come on, Glitch. <laughs> uh, glitch is having a glitch. I was trying to copy this to my new project and it never did it. So let's try that again. That's unfortunate. So here's Glitch show you way. First thing you want to do is find a button that says click to remix or remix this. Remix is our cute way of saying make a copy for myself. So now I'm doing this again. Glitch has gotten a little slower in the past and they fixed the issues they had. Oh, there we are. So notice I've gotten a new project here with a new clever name of Tough Responsible Raptor. If you've never used Glitch before, it names projects in these clever two or three word ways. So you can then remember them instead of some sort of like, you know, 
64 base encoded thing. Have you all succeeded in doing this in finding the glitch project and copying it to your own project? If you have, yeah, I see a thumbs up, make some sort of like gesture or motion. If you haven't, then make an appropriate, <laughs> haven't done it gesture or motion. I see some, some thumbs ups happening. I'm gonna assume you've all done it and it's all going great. So this is our starter code. Look around over here, there's a bit of a server, there's some JSON, some other things. For this beginning course, all we're gonna use is in the public directory and the assets thing. So first of all, there's two web pages over here. We're gonna use index.html, that's it. Index.html is a basic AMP web page with the things AMP likes to see in the beginning here, like uh, likes to see that we've loaded up the AMP runtime. It wants to see this UTF-8 encoding. It wants to see either the word AMP or lightning bolt as an attribute for HTML. It wants this AMP boilerplate CSS. And then CSS itself for the project is right over here. AMP wants this put in line because that way you avoid extra network requests for the CSS. So AMP wants you to have all the CSS in line for valid AMP. And then finally at the end, the actual HTML that defines how the page actually looks. There it is. So you'll be using this and also you'll be using the assets area. The assets area is full of images. To use an image here, you just click on the image and it pops up into a nice light box with this long URL here. You can copy the URL and then use it in your project. They're long because everyone shares the same namespace, but I can actually copy this and stick it like, you know, in a browser tab and there it will be our image. It works. So all you need to know really is that there's index.html and these assets here. Any questions on any of that? If not, let's try some stuff. There's a glitch editor, we said this before. There's images, said this before. Okay, I'll, one more thing if you want to, this is optional. The AMP validator is useful for this course, but not essential. It tells you if you have any errors basically on your page. It's kind of useful, it's not required. I'll explain that to you. So in Glitch, you can show the web page itself in a new window or near the code. You put it into a new window, there's your web page actually. You can see over here, I've got this thing that's red, with the one next to it. Do you see that up by the URL bar? Is that visible? Can I also, uh, can I annotate this? I probably shouldn't annotate this. It might break things. So over here, I don't know if that appears or not on your on Zoom. Do you see this pop up over here? Yeah. Yes. It's actually an error on this page. So it'll tell you these things. So it's useful. If you don't have this validator, you can do the following. Instead, you can actually load up this page here. Let's copy this and put it into a new tab. You could put at the end of it pound development equals one, and then it'll put error messages in the console. So there's that in the console. So you can do it that way instead. If you want to see your errors in this validator, just go here and search for um, AMP validator extension or something like that. And let's get out of that. Hold on a second. There it is. If you're using Chrome, you can just install this extension if you want to. And I put that in the chat if you want to do this. So back to our project over here. We've done that. We've mentioned this over here that there's lightning bolt or amp in the HTML tag. And we're going to use now our first AMP component. If you used it before, this is kind of basic, so I apologize. For most of you, this is probably new. One thing the AMP does is it replaces the image tag with AMP image. It doesn't replace most tags, just a couple. Image and video get replaced with AMP equivalents. Why is that? Because AMP wants you to be able to specify the size of it within the height, and also to control when images actually load. So if things are not actually above the fold, if images are somewhere below and they have to be scrolled up to to be seen, AMP will automatically lazy load those things. So you're looking over here, as you scroll up on your phone, AMP will load images as they're about to appear. This makes loading things faster. Actually now, because of this example, this is now part of Chrome. 
and other web browsers as well, there's now actually a tag for this in the image tag. So because of this, they're considering actually getting rid of AMP image, but it's still there now. What it does is it gives AMP control of when to load images. It also means when things are loaded from Google search that they can be loaded faster because images can be loaded when necessary, not before that. So notice though that our project here isn't that smart and it uses the image tag. So your first project here is to replace the image tag with AMP image and do this the following way. And there's some more examples of components. Oh yeah, also I should mention that I said this before, but certain components, most components require you to add the right JavaScript to the head so they'll work. All right, anyway, AMP image, AMP image, AMP image, AMP image, we said this before. So your first goal is to change image to AMP image. You wanna change the tag to AMP image, close the tag, uh, keep source as it is, and add width and height, because AMP wants you to add width and height so it can lay the page out smoothly. So I'll do that on my project. Go ahead and do that. If you've gotten it, then please put your glitch link in the chat. And we can all admire your handiwork. You should have no valid AMP errors after doing this. Uh, we've got one from Raphael. And Spark adjoining bow. Very good. No validation errors. There's our beautiful cheese bike. Notice it is yellow. Anybody else got this? Put your link there in the chat if you could. Leonardo. Northern slow Sarasaurus. Is Sarasaurus really a word? I guess it is now. Very good. Anybody else want to share? I'll assume you all got this working. So this is nice. I'll show you mine over here. Mine also seems to be a working version. Here's how it should look in HTML. Simply, again, AMP image, source as it was before, adding in width and height, and then closing the AMP image tag. So this is all well and good, but notice here, if I go to my Chrome and simulate other kinds of devices, my bike has a problem. Namely, you can't see the whole thing because this is not a responsive image. Let's get the screen to be responsive here. If we change it, notice that it's too small. When the size of the screen is big enough, it appears, the image is fixed size. Wouldn't it be nice if it was a responsive image? I think so. So go to your project and add one more thing, one more attribute, add layout, oops, which I'll spell wrong, equals responsive. And see if it becomes responsive or not. If you've done that and tried it out, then please put the link in the chat again. Penelope Fluff Slime Mascara. <laughs> Fluff Slime Mascara. Let's see this here. Is this going to be responsive? Suspense. Yeah, look at that. Ingenious. Same link from Raphael. So again, you can do this yourself with HTML and CSS, but yep, yeah, wants to make things easier for you. So it provides this layout system where you can make things responsive automatically. And there's mine also. In fact, if you go to amp.dev, this will be doing a couple of times in this class over here. There's a nice illustration here of the various kinds of layouts that exist. Is this it? Amp layout, here it is. You can choose layout equals fill, which means that it fills the space that's available to it. A fixed layout, which means what we saw before, this is the default. It's not responsive, it just has the image size that you gave it. A flex item, a fixed height only, responsive container, no display meaning don't show anything. 
there's various uh, types here of layout. If you're an app developer, you will use these to make your screen and the user's page look appropriate at all times. I see an error on this page. Oh, look at this, an error. All right, <laughs> things to note for later. An error on app.dev. Any questions on this? Let's get a little more elaborate then. Not too elaborate. We just did this, we just did this, we just did this. Let's put a video on our page. We saw an example of this before, of a YouTube video. Now we'll do our own video. So AMP YouTube is an, ex an extended component, which means that using it means including YouTube's, sorry, including AMP YouTube's own JavaScript. And it's just the usual things with AMP. You know, specify the dimensions, the layout type if you want to, and then in this case, one additional thing, the video ID. And the ID is the stuff after the V equals in the query string. That's the video ID for YouTube. So now, well, actually, let's go back and make this a little bit easier for you. To make this really work, you should go to amp.dev, our documentation site that we work on, and look up AMP YouTube and see how it's used because it will give you some important information you want to know. Especially at the top over here, the required JavaScript, you need the script here for it to work. So you're gonna to wanna to copy this URL here and include the script in the head of your document. And then the rest is examples of how to use it, the attributes you use to customize it over here, autoplay, looping, things like that. But really the examples are kind of like this, data video ID, layout, and the size, width and height. So given that information, please add a video to the bottom of your site. If you use a size 480 by 270, it will look nice and fit nicely on the page. Make it responsive if you want to. Choose any video you want to choose. If you use the video over here, I think it'll be a cheese bicycle being made. And don't forget to use your script tag. I will now do this myself as well. Uh, as you get it, feel free to add your link to the chat. I see a few coming in here. <laughs> Fluff slime mascara. I love that they give you this very, very girly. <laughs> I'm sorry. Glitch is obviously giving you a gender role, and I apologize for that. Oh, look at this. There is no need to be upset because we've got a seal or something. That was very cute. <laughs> Does that mean everything is good? I'm just guessing from. My vague knowledge of Spanish. Don't but don't say tudo bim. Okay, I won't say that now. Very nice. Uh, I'm gonna close those. This is the if you use the video idea I gave you, you end up getting this lovely video of a cheese bicycle being made. See, there it is. We have a question here from Helder. Uh, too many scripts bad for overall speed? It can be, yeah. If you use a lot of components, it can't be a problem. Notice that the JavaScript for these, let's look over here. I think they're pretty small. These are probably super small. 
So if I look at the AMP things here, AMP YouTube is only 9.4K. It's pretty small. YouTube's own JavaScript is 488K. So <laughs> plus actually the 545K total. But the AMP things are all small. Auto Lightbox is only 3K. V0 is 70K now. It's gotten smaller. They're always working on making it smaller. Actually, uh, V0 can make things a little slower, but they're now working on making apps so that you don't have to use that anymore at all. And the components will work without the V0. Yeah, you're right that making calls can be a problem. Multiple requests can be a problem. But if you use H2 or H3, it's not quite as bad as with HTTP 1.1. Notice only 26 requests on this page. 26 requests is more than it could be, but most pages have 100 requests, 200 requests. So web pages tend to have much fewer requests and much fewer bytes than most pages on the web. If I just go do, I was looking at this page yesterday, for example, like this is the average web page over here, hundreds of requests, lots of bytes being loaded. I was looking at this, I gave a talk to people in Drupal, typical of the web, you know, hundreds of requests, four megabytes, six megabytes, whatever. So AMP pages tend to be smaller than their counterparts. Still, there are ways you can make things smaller. And the team actually is working on ways to make things even smaller than they are now. They're working on an AMP compiler so you can have even less code on your pages. Anyway, AMP YouTube, there was that, there's our solution. Again, like with all AMP components, you have the components, you close it, and you have your layout width and your height and data video ID in this case to specify which video it is. Any comments or questions so far on this? Let's do a little more of this. Oh, we also have to have this JavaScript here. Let's do a little more to actually find components you want to use, look at the documentation and see how to customize things. So for example, to add an image carousel, use AMP carousel. You know what these things are? They're called image sliders sometimes or image carousels where you slide around the screen and see different images popping up. So to make a carousel of images, we'll use documentation. And you can see things that are like, how do you customize it with attributes? How do I style it? Which layouts can I use? Of course, what does it do? Examples of the component in action. Let's take a look. I get the actual documentation again. So here's our documentation. Let's go to AMP carousel. You will see over here, there's two versions, point one and point two. There at the top is again, the required JavaScript. And over here, attributes show how to customize it. So you can use autoplay or not autoplay. Let's get rid of the sidebar. You can have a delay, you can have a loop. You can choose two different types over here. One is carousel where everything is shown. You can scroll them, widths can vary. One is slides where you see one slide at a time on the screen. And of course, at the top here are various examples of this in action. So having now seen this, you can now do your own carousel. So here's an example of a carousel, how it would look. The things in AMP carousel can be anything. It could be text, videos, images. The children of AMP carousel become the things that get slid around the screen. In this case, we're gonna use images. So, now try this yourself. Again, to find images and glitch, we want to go to this assets area. We can then click on anything and copy the URL for it. So in this case, your assignment is to add an image carousel above this YouTube video. Make it responsive, choose type slides so that you'll have one big image on the screen at a time. Make it so it loops back after the last slide so it never ends. If you use a size of 412 by 309, it will look good with our CSS. The three images listed there will also look good, but any images are fine. Images from the assets folder, images from the internet, images from your own computer. Although we're on glitch, you have to upload these things, whatever you want. So again, use documentation to see, again, how to use the app carousel and add one with these three images. Any questions on that? If not, let's give this a try. I will mute and do this myself too.
again, if you get this, please put your link in the chat. If you have questions or you're stuck, the link is still fine. We can help you debug. I see two have come in over here. Substantial Meteor Carnation. This bank has gotten elongated for some reason. But look at this. It looks good. Now for a bonus, can you make it loop back from the beginning so that it never ends? And here's Penelope's fluff slime mascara. Nice, it loops. Very good. And we have Raphael's. Oh, look at this, a bonus. <laughs> we added a video. Bear archery spark. I'm curious. Very nice. This is my son's dream to do archery. He loves weapons. All right, very good. Anybody else? Does Tony have that looping yet? Yeah, look, oh, look at this, it's a video. <laughs> I'll have to remember not to say Tudo Bam ever again. I didn't say it before either. I have something to share related to, to this component. Uh, I, I use the, the Google News app and there you sometimes find the links that are uh, AMP pages. And I, I think it's just one site that has the, the they, they have the, this component, but with the controls that hide after you click the first one or, or something like that. And then you try to swipe and what Google News is doing is like changing to the next news so oh, you no. can actually see more than the, the first page, <laughs> the, the first image. Um, so yeah, it's probably a mix of a lot of things, uh, how the app works and how the web uh, is, is using the component. Uh, but yeah. yeah, so I guess Google News stole the swipe basically. Yeah. Uh, this could have been fixed actually. When I first used the carousel, I complained because the arrows vanished and I couldn't find them sometimes. They actually added this controller over here, this controls thing. If you use controls, the arrows will always be there. Never yeah, go the away. Arrows. Yeah, yeah, that's, I think, it, I, I will send a, a message to the owners of, of the site and tell them, please add this to the AMP uh, version because if not, then they have like a, a type of news, those, I don't know, 20 best places in the world to see and they are always galleries or carousels. And you can yeah. always only see the first one. And I always want to see because I, I, I say, okay, let's see beautiful places. So I always enter on, in this kind of, of news and I always have the same issue. So yeah, I will. That's annoying. Let them know. 
it could be a good case for actually for web stories. So, yeah. I mean, if you know the stories format, maybe a better format than the carousel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the carousels are popular. Well, we have two more things to do, but the group is pretty small. And I don't know if you want to do one more kind of like adding a component simple thing or just go to the end and add with something crazier. So here's the choices. We can do this one over here, which is adding social sharing links, just, just adding a component and putting it in there. Or we can add a menu instead, which is more elaborate and involves actually handling user actions and handling events. What do you think? Since the group is so small, we can choose these things. I see one response which says, let's try the menu. I agree with that. We should get advanced here. And if you used before, again, this could all be reviewed the whole way through. So sorry about that if it's true, but also if you wanna learn more about AMP, if you, these things might not be new for you either, but if you go to amp.dev and you go to the courses here, this is the beginning course. The menu part is actually in the intermediate course. It's also an advanced course where we actually display things from a server make a product page and it gets more elaborate. If you wanna learn more about AMP, haven't done these things before, then you can. The new things in AMP that we could be discussing instead, we can ask, we'll talk about at the end of this, they're more about how AMP is used in the world really and how AMP is changing to be more flexible and more part of the web in general. By the way, if I go to Portuguese now, I should now see a few of these things in Portuguese. I said, here we go. <laughs> Look at that because we added these in the last few weeks, our volunteer has been translating these things. If you wanna get involved in translating, you could, because notice that some of these are translated, but now that one isn't, because he just did this a couple of days ago. There's more that are not translated. Also Learn Amp, I think, is not translated. No, it's Learn Amp, it's just called Learn Amp. We should change that too, it's something in Portuguese. Anyway, let's go back over here. Here is, uh, let's go ahead. Let's find out where this is. Oh, we're gonna skip everything until we get to building the menu, slide 68. So the way this is done is supposed to be simple. It can get pretty complicated, but it's supposed to be simple. You also can use again, JavaScript now in AMP through a component called AMP script, which I've written the documentation for and change all the examples for. It runs JavaScript in a web worker for safety, but this is for kind of simpler interactions that are more basic, like hiding something, showing something, loading data, things like that. So back with the good old jQuery, jQuery made things much easier. I just learned JavaScript and suddenly jQuery came around and it made my life much better because I could just, instead of doing document, get element by ID and XTT, XML, HTTP request, and all these things, I could use this wonderful dollar sign thing and just say, okay, I've got a div with the ID warning. I could just use dollar sign with a selector of pound warning and that'll grab that div. And then I just use the hide method and it hides it. It's so easy. I could assign that to an on-click event handler. And there it would be. AMP is actually pretty similar. Here's a similar kind of thing in AMP. If you have a div whose ID is warning, you could then take a button, use the on attribute, not on click, on attribute can contain this thing with three components, an event, a div ID, and an action. So in this case, if the user taps the button, which is an event that AMP creates, which contains either, it corresponds either to a, a tap on a screen or a button click, then grab that warning div and hide it. Same idea, but in AMP. There it is, a little bigger. So we're gonna actually use this now to add a menu to our site. So this is gonna require some new stuff like AMP sidebar. This component came with AMP when AMP first existed. It's still pretty useful. Essentially what it does is it hides this content until you open it. When it opens, it comes out from the left or the right side, and then it displays the content. When you close it, it goes away. 
and also AMP adds this gray overlay, this opacity to the whole page. There are other ways to make menus in AMP that slide down from the top or other kinds of things, but this is the most simple way to make a menu in AMP. AMP sidebar, again, to use this, it's better to look at the documentation. So let's do that. AMP sidebar, sorry, I didn't spell it correctly. There's also more things here. There's nested menus and mega menus that are newer AMP components. For this to work, you have to use the, the JavaScript here at the top and just use attributes to customize it. Which side will it load from left or right? Layout should be no display, by the way. It shouldn't be displayed until you click something. So just use layout, no display. To make things appear, you use these actions and events. Is there an example here? There is one over here, I'm sure. But here's an example. If you have a button of some sort, like a hamburger button, you'd use the on attribute and just say tap the div of the sidebar and toggle or open as you'd like to make things open. And then to close it, again, toggle it or close it. And that should give you everything you need to know. If you want to use actions and events in more detail, it's also a nice page listing the actions and events for everything in AMP, really. So there's different, different components have their own actions or events that are synthetic for those things, but some apply to all elements. For example, tap is for all any elements in AMP. There's also a change event for inputs. There's input debounce, other kinds of things. For carousels, when you change the slide, a slide change event fires. But that isn't as important for this. All that matters for this really is the, uh, the closing and the opening of objects and the tap. Anyway, so here's how this is going to work. It has a lot of instructions. In the header, add a div with a little three line thing that toggles the menu when it's tapped. If you give the div the class navbar trigger, we have CSS that makes it look nice. So again, this is a key thing. You want to use that on tap and so on and so forth to toggle the menu. And then add the sidebar itself right below the body. It should be a direct child of body because then AMP can then add the overlay to the whole page. Give it ID sidebar one and a class sidebar. Inside the sidebar itself, put whatever you want. But if you put it like a nav element with class nav and some links, which are ULs with LIs inside of them, we have CSS that makes all the stuff that will look nice. So again, you're going to add a nav element there with class nav. You're going to have an unordered list in there with class label, with four LIs with all class nav item. And finally, add a new div to the sidebar itself inside the sidebar with an X in it, which closes the menu when it's tapped. So really you're doing three things, you're adding the hamburger menu button, you're adding the sidebar itself, adding the close button. Does that make any sense? <laughs> Hopefully it does. I'm going to try to actually leave this presentation so I can copy for you these important, oh, there's a solution. That seems like, ooh, that's bad form. OK, I'm going to copy these things here into the chat. There's a nice three line. Oh, come on. And there's a nice X. There's that. We're going to present this again. I'll do this also. If you get stuck anywhere, please share your glitch or ask questions. Otherwise, good luck.
how are we doing there? Any progress on this? It can feel complicated at first because you have to know how to actually use these actions and events. Once you know it, it's often pretty simple. Penelope, maybe first here. Let's take a look at this. I see some error messages there. Let's see if this, oh, look at that. You've got the X on the bottom, but it works. That's kind of neat. What are these errors here? Oh yeah, um, those aren't a big deal. So AMP wants you to add role and tab index for people that have screen readers and so on for accessibility, but that still works. The X would be on the top normally. It seems like also X isn't actually a button. That is a button, it just, huh. Looking at mine now. I wonder why your X is not a button. Oh, it's a div, yeah. <laughs> Looking at my code over here, how did I make my X? You can use a div for that still. If the CSS then, you know, changes the cursor. Well, mine's also a div actually. I just use div, I use role equals button. And then it seems to automatically know enough to actually make the cursor into the little finger. So if you use role equals button, you'll have two things that work. I'm gonna paste mine into here. Here's how mine looks. There's our menu. There's the X. This is really good though. Should we show the solution over here? Are people almost there? Are you just so close? So very close? Are you like, what is this thing?
let's take about two more minutes to keep on doing this. And then we'll share the solution. Ben, um, I don't want to hey. cut off your, your groove, but it's getting a bit <laughs> late here and dinner time is yeah. uh, coming. So, yeah. I need lunch also over here too. So, yeah, yeah. Get all, all right. All right. And then we got two more minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here's the <a> solution. <laughs> here, here's your header. You have a div inside there uh, with that role equals button tab index like zero. Here's the key part on equals tap sidebar one toggle. And there's your button to open the menu. And then menu itself is just uh, an amp sidebar. Layout no display is ideal. And then inside there, notice there's a div that's the close button, which again is sidebar one toggle. It could be also sidebar one close. And then the nav is just whatever you're, you want to put in there for your menu. I think that's really it. And of course, adding that component JavaScript is helpful. Wait, the last, oh my God, we got some, we got some more. <laughs> and we have to actually go. That's pretty good. You're, I think you're lacking the classes for the CSS, but that's certainly a menu. So that, that's the important part. You can add those classes whenever you want to. And then real quick, substantial meteor. Hey, you're getting there, you're getting there. We could debug it, but no out of time to debug it, I believe. You can find the answer though on the, well, you also can look at it on the course there. If you go to the intermediate course, sorry, somewhere in there, but no out of time. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And if we have questions in the next two minutes or so, please ask questions or make comments as you will. So yeah, I can go with one maybe. Uh, what are the, the next steps that you are seen for for um, uh, probably what you said about uh, using it like without uh, needing the, the the library using just the, the components without the entire uh, tool set let's say that's what yeah that is a, a big next step yeah i don't know if that will catch on or not but they've been working really hard at what they call bento amp rewriting all the components with preact which is a sort of a React-like library that's very compact. So they can all be used by themselves without the runtime. So instead of saying, okay, I can't, as you saw before, I'm in this big existing website, I can't convert it all to AMP or convert these pages to AMP. How do I do this? This is complicated. You could instead make it a bit faster and perhaps more maintainable by just adding in more web, more AMP components to your page. You could replace existing JavaScript with AMP components until you're bored of doing that. The one disadvantage is you won't be in the AMP cache. It won't be valid AMP. So you won't get the benefits of the AMP cache, image compression, and all those kinds of things. But it's, it might be easier for a lot of people to do it that way. So that is one big change. The other big change for AMP is, of course, I mentioned before the change for Google search, which is that AMP is no longer going to be required to get that top stories carousel for publishers. Instead, it will help you get that top stories carousel, but making their page fast by other means will be just as effective. Okay, nice. Which I'm really excited about personally. Okay, don't see any other questions, but if any of you uh, guys would like then to ask a question, please reach, we make sure that your question gets to Ben or you can Tweet Ben. <laughs> yeah, you can tweet at me or say hello mm -hmm. by other means. Yeah. Leonardo, we should discuss uh, the AMP consent thing, Leonardo. I'm curious mm -hmm. for your, your impression about that. Okay. Okay, Ben, thank you so much for this moment. It was a different moment for our meetup and uh, it's been a while since we didn't gather uh, our our community so it, it was really cool thank you all for participating and um, 
I hope to see you all soon. We keep in touch, I guess. Yeah, good to meet you. Everyone take care. Yeah. And we wait you here in Lisbon when, yeah. when you... <laughs> Oh, that'd be nice. I love the pastela de nata. Is that what they're called? The little creamy cakes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was there once before and I had those every morning and I had like two every morning for breakfast. I so too. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do that now, I don't think. <laughs> I could have had five, honestly. They were so good. Yeah, it's 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 funny. Every uh, everyone I know outside Portugal, uh, the first thing they they tell me is the only thing I can remember is pastel de nata. <laughs> it's because they're really hard to find here. They're finally yeah. now just in the last few years. I've seen a couple in New York, but otherwise mm -hmm. I I couldn't find them here anywhere for a long time. I know, I know. Okay, <laughs> we'll we'll be here waiting for you, Ben. All right. Thanks I a lot. That. Thanks, Tony, for no the recording and for sticking with us thank you all bye. bye thank you bye, bye guys Take bye care. Thank you.